any conversation uh, that you have will be heard by everybody, even though you're not keyed. In other words, you can key with that jack. Hello, Kathy. Hi, how you doing, John? Did you get that? Roger. Testing. I'm Don Putty, and I'd like to Testing. welcome you all to the uh, Moker. We're in the uh, second floor, of course, and uh, as you can see from the uh, crew patch plaques that we have uh, on the walls here from this particular uh, floor, we flew uh, Skylab and ASTP. Although you see the ALT uh, crew patch uh, over on the left-hand side, we didn't actually fly that from this room. We flew it from a smaller room up on the third floor. Uh, there is another room that used to be just identical to this particular uh, room uh, located on the third floor from which we flew uh, Gemini and Apollo. This particular floor also is being configured for uh, the OFT flight series. The labels on the consoles that you see here are for Skylab and so you shouldn't pay too much attention to them. I will be going through very briefly uh, who sits at what console in a few minutes. I would also uh, like to take this particular opportunity to those of you who I have not met personally uh, to extend a, uh, a personal welcome aboard. I know I've met a lot of you either during the interview process or subsequent, but some of you I have not. So I would like to, to take this opportunity to say welcome aboard. Uh, I think you'll, you'll find uh, what we have uh, here and the operations that you're going to get involved in in the future to be uh, very interesting and very challenging. With that, let me turn it over to Dave. Thank you, Don. Uh, I'd also like to thank you, Don, for coming over here and helping me this morning. We're talking about Capcom duties, and uh, I thought it'd be more realistic to plug in over here in the control room, and you can uh, get an idea of some of the things uh, that the Capcom is going to be faced with. Don was a flight director on Apollo 16, Apollo 17, Skylab 2, 3, 4, ASTP, ALT, and he's the entry flight director for the space shuttle. So he's got a lot of experience uh, over here, and he's worked with a lot of Capcom's uh, that range, I hope, from good to great. I'm not sure. He may have a different opinion, but he, I'm going to let him express that in a few minutes. Without further ado, I'm, I've got a series of air-to-ground tapes that I'm going to get you to listen to this morning with some explanation. Uh, and with that, I think I'll go ahead and ask the ComTech to go ahead and start running the first tape. It's of the uh, first Skylab mission that you'll get briefed on by PJ and uh, Joe Kerwin tomorrow. So this is kind of going to lead, lead into that. When this tape starts, there is about a minute or so of PAO, PAO introduction uh, to the tape that will uh, not be on any of those Mark, T-minus one minute, one minute and counting in the launch of the first manned mission in Skylab. T-minus 50 seconds, T-minus 50 seconds and counting, and we are now going to internal power. All stages switching to internal power, stages now and and fuel tanks pressurized approaching the 30 second mark in the countdown at 30 seconds water will begin spraying on the deck of the mobile launcher t minus 30 seconds and roll is complete Houston. roger stand by for mode one bravo mark mode one bravo roger propellant up is rcs command roger the modes on here Tyler, are Houston, your feet modes. wet Roger, feet wet. Feet wet means the trajectory is uh, such hey, that if they aborted, they'd lay in the water. Launch vehicle rates are all off. Roger, stand by for mode one, Charlie. Mark, you mode one, Charlie. What? Six minutes. Roger, we're going up here. Roger. Roger. Skylab Houston, we're go at seven minutes. Okay, Houston, four good gimbal motors, and we're go at seven. Roger, copy. Hey, did we just have, did we just have PUC 
Jeff Houston. Roger, we concur, and you're go at eight minutes. Okay. The U ship is Houston. Uh, Houston we predict shutdown at niner plus four niner. Of, uh, propeller. Nine plus four niner. Understand. That's firm. Which is a good okay, point when you here. when you're working with a crew and you can read concern into their voice. You it always takes one extra word of. Uh, Stand by uh, for mode three alpha. Talk to make sure that what's going on is something that works. Mark, you're mode three alpha. Three alpha. Uh, what I would like to do is just to briefly run around the room and make sure that uh, what Bill described to you is the various functions for uh, the various control room operators. Uh, you understand where they would be actually located in this room. Uh, I guess the point I would like to make is that our OFT operations are going to be very, very similar to what we had for Apollo and Skylab. Uh, you won't notice any difference, uh, as Bill indicated, until we start getting into the mature operations as far as a, as a slowly decreasing trend of the amount of ground operators that we're going to have. For OFT, we do plan to have three flight control teams uh, manning around the clock. So let me go around the horn in the fashion uh, that we typically do as we get a go-no-go -no -go for a specific critical event and identify the uh, various uh, console operators and the position at which they're located. And I'll start out where Dave is sitting on the front row, uh, down on the left-hand side. Uh, there we have the ground resources and network manager, uh, commonly known as, as network. And I'm gonna give you kind of a, an overall title and I'm gonna give you the title that we normally use in, in loop communications. Uh, this will probably be the last time you hear the long title. From now on, if you come over for a simulation or something like that, you'll only hear the short title. That particular console operator is responsible for monitoring uh, and helping us uh, with configuration control of both the uh, MCC and the uh, network resources. Next to him, although you see the console uh, uh, labeled booster, in that particular position and on over, on the right-hand side of it are the flight dynamics officers, and they're primarily responsible for trajectory monitoring and control. On his right is the guidance officer who's responsible for guidance, navigation, and aero monitoring. Uh, next to him is the data processing uh, engineer, or what we call uh, DPS, and he's responsible for the pass and the BFS uh, overall software management. And on his right, on the last console, on the first row, we have computer command who's responsible for all of the uplink command activity we have with the exception of the INCO commands and uh, the abort commands. Moving up on the next row up to second row uh, and starting out on the right, managing the group displays that you see uh, up, up in front, uh, what we call IDA 4s and the group time displays. He's also responsible for establishing voice, TV, circuit priorities and as more or less our interface in the priority of communication flow traffic in and out of the MCC. He works considerably with the network operator that I talked to you about briefly a minute ago. He is also the individual who is responsible through the DOD reps for all of our contingency landing support. Is the cap composition, I'll come back and say a couple more words about him in just a minute. To his right, is the flight activities officer who's responsible for uh, developing the flight activity plan and also coordinating the flight data file. And on the right of that is the experiment position. Uh, the positions on the back row are not integrally involved in the day-by-day -day operations. They belong to uh, management first. It's important for you to realize that we feel like the Capcom is an integral part of the flight control team. I'm sure most of you believe that his primary function is to serve uh, as a link between the ground and the flight crew. Uh, that's certainly true. However, I think he also performs two other very important functions, and that is not only in the pre-flight planning, but in the actual flight conduct when we have things that come up a little bit out of the normal.